The last thing I want to talk about right now is the price of electricity in the UK. So let's talk about how much it costs to run a 3D printer. I've got myself two of these things and a couple of monitoring smart plugs and I've been collecting data. A lot of data. Let's go. The cost to run a 3D printer is actually quite a hard thing to really pin down because there's not only a lot of them out there but there's also a lot of variables. I decided that I wanted to really focus on how they perform out of the box rather than adding modifications like heat chambers, things like that. None of my printers have that and I don't think they're that common. Anyway, without further waffling, let's get right into the data because there's a lot to cover. For this test, I printed one Benchy on each of the six printers that I have in service listed on screen now. A bit of foreshadowing here as well because I've got this FL Sun Super Racer Delta printer that I haven't reviewed yet, it's probably going to be next video. Obviously, how much energy it takes to make a Benchy will be a function of how much time it takes to make a Benchy, so I decided it would be most fair if I just filed up the default profile for each printer in Cura and use the most default PLA setting on that profile. By and large, the settings are quite similar across the board, with the only exception being a couple of them had a default bed temperature of 50C, while most of them were 60C, or in the case of glass or smooth PEI, I had to change them to 60 degrees C, otherwise the print would not stick. What I found in terms of time is on this chart here. The FL Sun Super Racer, notably, is probably being a bit of a show-off with its default profiles, but the rules are the rules, this is what they give you as defaults. And here's the results. You can see that the Super Racer wins by nature of its speed. Um, you'll see in a moment that that's literally why it's winning, but right behind it is the Artillery X2, which we'll come back to in a minute. The most expensive Benchy was the Ender 3. Both the Direct Drive modded Ender 3 and Steve were pretty much equal. From this data though, we can make this chart and we can see the FL Sun secret. And if you look at the energy as a proportion of the time taken, you start to realize that the Neptune and the Sidewinder are both more efficient somehow. There's still more to get from this though. You can slice the data by my favorite new unit, which is the Benchy per kilowatt hour and I really want to make that a thing. And of course that chart led to this. If you want to get the highest Benchy per kilowatt hour output, then apparently you need to be using a Delta it seems. But look at the artillery. The reason I keep pointing it out is because it is my largest printer that I have at this point. It should, you would expect, be the most expensive to run. I thought mainly this would just be fun to see, and it's on screen now. I was able to isolate most of the individual values for the cooling fan, the steppers, obviously the steppers just locked in place, not moving, which will be a different value, and the hot end and the bed. I think it's probably not that surprising if we think about it. A lot of printers do sit with all the fans on while they're idle, but if you work this out over the course of a year, it can amount to a very high cost of essentially doing nothing, and that's never a good idea. Furthermore, if you own a print farm with many of these printers, you might just want to think about turning off idle printers somehow. Again, I am impressed with the Sidewinder X2 for having almost no idle power consumption. As I've noted in past videos, it shuts down all the fans when idle, and this is something that would be nice to see in other printers too. If I show you a graph of all the printers just heating the beds for an hour, or running at 60 degrees C, it looks like this. It's kind of very much similar to the results of the Benchy thing before, so there's no surprises. It seems like running the bed for an hour takes around 70 watt hours of energy. What I did want to see though is how it varies by temperature, so here's one graph of that on the Neptune 2S. This actually looks quite linear. The main reason I wanted to look at this was to see if you could save some energy by, for example, printing the first layer at 70 degrees C on a PEI or glass bed, which is needed to improve adhesion, and then you could drop the temperature after you've put that layer down, but you retain adhesion by staying above, say, 40 degrees C. I've done some tests with this in the past and I've had reasonable success, but obviously I wouldn't advise it on critical long prints. You do stand to save a fair bit of energy though by doing this, it looks like, so definitely worth thinking about. With all the results we have so far, we can actually start to get a bit closer to actually comparing like for like with these printers. If I show you this chart, where I've taken the Benchy energy and divided it by the time taken, you can get raw watts average over a Benchy print. I am aware that there will be an initial heat up penalty when you first start the printers, but in the results I took half hour versus one hour heat times and I didn't find the difference to be notable enough, so I don't think it really puts these results into question. 
On top of this, I can also overlay the bed power usage. It's interesting how this is about half the total power for most printers. The FL Sun note is a bit of a weird one. I think it might just be Delta stuff. I think they work significantly differently from bed slingers, and so there's something in there that's using more power. Let's talk about the artillery though. In every test, it absolutely aced the power consumption statistics. I think I might know why as well. The artillery is the only Ender style printer that I have that has a mains powered bed. I think that might be what's going on. Every other printer is powering its bed through the onboard power supply, and of course, stepping that voltage down, and I think also rectifying it to DC, as far as I'm aware they are DC heated beds, this is going to cause some losses. And apparently from these charts, it's not that efficient. To tie all this up, I just wanted to make some assertions about the data. You might not agree with those assertions, and I might have made some mistakes, but I hope that broadly, this will summarise what I found. Firstly, printers don't use that much energy. If I bring this graph back on screen, a 10 hour print, you can just multiply this up, and it's going to be about 1 to 1.5 kilowatt hours of energy. Which even with these new insane prices we've got here, that's going to be about 30 to 40 pence. It's really only a small percentage of the total print cost if you consider having to buy a printer, maintain a printer, and also the plastic. Secondly, idle power is a thing. And even though it might not look like much on a per hour basis, if you can hear the printer, it's probably a good idea to turn it off. It seems like the louder the printer when idle, the more energy it's taking. Thirdly, a good half of the power at 60 degrees C bed temperature is actually typically from the bed. This goes up a lot with higher temperatures, so this is even more reason to not use higher bed temperatures unless you have to. And I guess finally, mains powered beds potentially are a lot more efficient, which is another reason to use them, aside from the significantly faster heat up time, and it really is a lot faster. I would actually like to see, um, hopefully safely, the use of more mains powered beds in future on printers. Anyway, that's that. As usual, check the links in the description and any other info, corrections, etc. And I'll see you next time.